Aloha! Welcome friends to my Animal Crossing New Horizon Island. Since March of 2020, I have been working on making my imaginary island a home away from home. I originally come from the island Oahu, from the city Honolulu, but one of my favorite islands is Kona. I modeled my island after Kona and have been carefully designing it to have the elements of the big volcano island. So let's get started. Here's our first stop, the hula dancer section. In Hawaii, the culture is heavily tied in with dances like the hula that incorporate movements inspired by the ocean, lava, and the sky. You'll most likely see traditional Hawaiian and other Polynesian dances at a luau. However, a real luau isn't a show and a dance. A luau is a collection of family and friends to share stories, food, and love. At luau's, you will get to taste kulua, poi, and sometimes pineapple cake. Hawaii has a variety of gods and goddesses. My favorites is... My favorites are Namaka, the goddess of the ocean. You can see her throughout my island as this little blue figure. The other is Pele, the goddess of fire and volcanoes, another figure I've hidden throughout my island. Since Kona is a volcanic island that is continuously erupting and growing, Pele is right at home here on my beach. Being on a tropical island means you can obtain a large variety of flowers. Throughout my island, I have sections dedicated to the floral growth. However, if you continue on to the right of my island, you'll eventually hit Turtle Beach. On Kona, there is a little black sand beach called Punalu'u, where green sea turtles sunbathe. There are protective species, so you can only take photos from far away. Up to my house, I use neutral colors that can reflect the sun and keep the color long-lasting. A lot of times when you visit the islands, you'll see colors like pink, yellow, and white as they can stand the weather the best. In fact, the military hospital I was born in is still bright pink today. Every island in Animal Crossing has a hidden beach that has some pretty interesting visitors. Mine specifically pays homage to the ancient Hawaiian bones that one of my brothers found with his friends. My mom told them to go to an archeological building across the base houses, which caused a dig for nine ancient bones were found. When you visit the new grave, it is right next to our old house where we used to live on. Kona is also known for their coffee. Since the island is mostly volcanic, they don't have as many choices in crops. The coffee trees are ideal to grow on this island since the humidity is just right and allows for a different variety. The golden pele comes specifically from Kona and can only be imported from Kona. So if you have the chance to drink it, give it a try. I hate the taste of coffee by itself, but I can drink golden pele straight. Hawaii's culture also has heavy influences from the Japanese, since the islands are relatively close to one another. The Japanese brought over rice in the 1800s, which has quickly become a staple among Hawaiian dishes, which is why some of my island features have a Japanese twist to it. The beach and ocean hold incredible cultural ties to Hawaiians. Being surrounded and landlocked means the only way to travel is by boat, seaplanes, or if you're bold, swimming. One of the most important cultures to Hawaii is the surfboard. Here on my island, I have a row of surfboards with the phrase, Eddie went. <laughs> this is referring to Eddie Aikea, a native Hawaiian surfer who lived on the North Shore on Oahu. He was the first lifeguard at YMA Beach, saving over 500 lives with his surfboard and athleticism. In 1978, Eddie joined the Polynesian Voyaging Society on a 30-day voyage between Hawaii and Tahiti that the ancient Polynesians used to travel. Only 12 miles in, the boat had a leak in the hole and the boat capsized. In an attempt to save the 15 other passengers, Eddie paddled on his surfboard for help. A rescue boat managed to save the 15 passengers, but Eddie was never found. There are still surf competitions in Eddie's name, and he is seen as a hero among the entire Hawaiian islands. The phrase used to be, Eddie would go, but as years have passed, Eddie's family has changed the phrase to, Eddie went, as he went several times out to sea in order to save others. Finally, we end our tour with a surprise guest. This is a pirate Gulliver, a seagull who often finds himself washed ashore. It's ironic that he is here today, as one of Kona's best-known stories is Captain Cook. Captain Cook is credited as the first European to make contact with the Hawaiian Islands, welcomed when his ship ran out of supplies. However, he found an untimely end when he returned to the islands and was killed alongside his crew. Some of the histories say he was cannibalized because he was seen as the god Lono, but this tends to be a Western civilization propaganda, 
and most likely he made himself a howley, disrespecting the local chiefs, which resulted in his death. You can see where James Cooks is buried, but his tomb is on a beach you have to hike miles for and with rough terrain. It's safe to say he is not revered as an island hero. Mahalo for visiting my island and aloha.